Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. And when I started posting around software architecture design, I did so because it's topics that I really love and enjoy, and I didn't think there was enough good content out there about it. Fast forward today and somewhere like LinkedIn is flooded with it. The signal to noise ratio is not good. And more importantly, a lot of posts just miss context and nuance, which is what I'm gonna do is elaborate on some posts that I stumbled upon recently. The first is related to the ever increasingly popular vertical slice architecture, which is also massively confused by the masses. So this one is vertical slice architecture without, in quotes, domain-driven refactoring is just spaghetti code in use case slices. To apply it effectively, you, have to, you and your team need to know all the important code smells and refactoring techniques as well as all the other software engineering principles and patterns like CQRS, separation concerns, solid, principles of least surprise, dry, YAGNI, the list goes on, word salad of acronyms. Else your code base could deteriorate quickly. It's not a free pass to hack code per use case slice. That's just my interpretation of it. But it actually kind of is a free pass to hack code together for a use case. Before I explain why, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. The point is cohesion. For those in the back, again, the point is about cohesion. To group capabilities that your system provides, oftentimes around kind of business processes and workflows. It's not building a monolith or microservices, whatever your architecture in terms of how you distribute that. Either way, it could still be a giant turd pile. The point is to make it turn into a bunch of little turd piles. Now I say that jokingly because nobody wants to be building a turd pile or multiple turd piles. The point is you're building isolation, you're defining boundaries. So within that boundary, you can decide what are the capabilities that are related that we can group together. So when that post had acronym salad of all the things that you also need to do, well, you would need to do that regardless of vertical slice architecture or not if you're building a system that is based on focused on capabilities. This just allows you to have particular boundaries of vertical slices that decide what fits best. Should you apply certain patterns, dry, yagni, all these things? Sure, depending on the use case of that boundary. So in my example here, maybe I just have a straight data model. I don't have a domain model. It's pretty cruddy in this particular example, my first one. Maybe my second one is just really message and async driven, and I have a lot more uh, separation. Maybe I'm using something like clean architecture there or hexagonal to do this type of separation. Same thing with the other ones. You're deciding what you need given the actual use cases because not everything has the same value, the same complexity, and needs all the same various patterns. You can decide per grouping of use cases. So like I said, instead of building one massive turd pile, maybe you have many different turd piles and allows you to build something brand new, which is your polished turd pile. Now, I don't think this post is neither wrong or right. I think it's just missing a little bit of nuance. At the end of the day, we're talking about coupling and cohesion. If you need to think about kind of that word salad of acronyms, I never do. But if that is what you use in those principles, certain patterns to kind of get that degree of coupling, because that's almost every time what we're talking about of these things is about managing coupling. I almost never think about them because I'm really just thinking about the root, which is coupling and how I'm managing it. Which leads me to another post directly related, which is if you have your application and you only see folders like this, which is kind of by technical concern of API, models, views, controllers, DTOs, database, then your app doesn't tell anything about the problem it solves. It's driven by technology instead of the domain. If you wanna add new features, you need to add files to all these places. Features are mixed, leading to maintenance hell. That's actually about coupling is more so than anything. Now look at this folder structure. Car rental service has auto picker, user manager, payment gateway, invoice generator, support center. It's called screaming architecture. It screams the domain. Get on that to the minute because I don't think so at all. It's easy to navigate with clear domain separation. If you want a new feature, you add it to the main directory. It is better discoverability and results in low entry curve for new developers. A clean folder, folder structure. Uh, is like a well-organized room. Everything has its place, easy to find, easy to find what you need. Now that really could be said about the other one, depending on what your preference is. And so where I'm going with this is that your folder structure should communicate the domain, not the technology. In this example, I don't think it communicates the domain at all. I get it, it's a simple example, and that's the point of this video and why I wanna elaborate more and provide some more kind of nuance to some of these. 
is that this was a rental car service, but that didn't really tell me what the process was of anything, of how you rent a car. There was an invoice generator. When is that used? I have no idea. It's really about organizing code and thinking about feature sets and kind of those vertical slices and organizing that way a part of business processes. So when we're talking about screaming architecture or vertical slices, it's about those processes built around the capabilities. What does our software actually do? That was the point of screaming architecture, at least in the example it said, is to describe the domain. Well, a business capability defines the organization's capacity to successfully perform a unique business activity. I'm gonna use a completely different example from a video I've done, and I'll have a link to it at the very end of this video, which is about a kind of dining party hosting uh, system. And what I wanna illustrate here are all the things that actually happen in that process. Is a dinner is planned, maybe get seats get reserved because you have so many seats available for that, um, that party, that dinner. And then maybe somebody can cancel that reservation. We have more people do reservations. We can confirm our reservation. And then the actual dinner is hosted. All these are things are kind of a series of events of activities that happen for hosting and having a dinner party. There's a very big difference on what's kind of driving your design and how you're building your system. Is it around those capabilities, those activities that the business needs to perform? Or are you primarily being driven thinking about entities? In this simple example, this doesn't scream to me what actually are the capabilities. There's an auto picker, entity driven. There's an invoice generator, entity driven. And the reality in practice is entities for a lot of people just means data and data structures related to ORMs. And I love this post from Alberto, this tweet, exploring a business domain focusing on data structures will hide differences and highlight misleading similarities, ultimately nudging your design into unnecessary coupling. Back to my dinner party system, if I was using an entity-centric kind of driven approach, I would have a lot of coupling because everything has to interact for the actual business process because that's what we're modeling are entities, not processes. So we're gonna have all kinds of coupling between the dinner service and the menu service and all these things are services because that's what they're named. But we're gonna have a lot of coupling and we're gonna have a brittle system. We're gonna develop a turd pile. Which leads me to 99% of all software needs are CRUD or someone commented on one of my recent posts. I literally never encountered a CRUD case in the 15 years I've been doing this. It's always about workflows, business constraints, state machines, events, uh, push-based information, etc. I'm trying to understand whether my experience was particularly special or whether the comment was a crazy exaggeration. How about you? What most of your experience building software products are CRUD? For me, it's a little bit of both. In the heart and the core of real value of what I'm building, it's exactly as this person described, it's business constraints, workflows, events, these types of things. On the kind of the outside, the supporting role of that, it oftentimes can be cut crud with a little bit of events and maybe some specific capabilities kind of baked in there, but a lot majority of it can be crud. What I think the person's related to from their comment was a lot of systems are built crud doesn't necessarily mean that they should be. I love elaborating on some of these posts and there's an abundance of them on LinkedIn. So I wanna do more, maybe like a series of these things. I'm trying to think of a title of what that series could be. My initial thought was the LinkedIn developer cesspool, but that's not really the case because these posts weren't bad and there's a lot of good posts that I wanna to highlight too. I just wanna elaborate more on some of them. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the, in the comments. And I wanna hear your quote opinion. So get in the comments and leave me your thoughts about these two posts. If you wanna chat with software developers about topics like this around software architecture and design, I have a private Discord server. If you join my channel, you can get access. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.